All right, we went ahead and put the <coughs> wheels on. Um, in the last video, you saw that we, you know, polished up the wheels a little bit, changed the wheel bearings, and we replaced the sprag. It's a little bit easier to pop the wheel back on because the hooks um, face downward, so it's easier to have the the rear tire fully seat in the frame when it's upside down. But right now, we're going to move on. We're going to put the kickstand on. All right, in the kickstand kit comes a, let's see, a bolt, lock, washer, spring, and the actual kickstand assembly itself. Um, your first thought, maybe like mine, and put this on, bolt it down first, and then get the spring to come down. This spring is super strong, and uh, I think it may be actually easier to put the spring on first and then leverage this into place. So we're going to do that. So we're Hook it on the kickstand, hook it on the, the tab on, on the frame. We'll put that down. What we'll do is we'll lift up a little bit and kind of wiggle it into place. And uh, we'll get a bolt in our hand here. Sneak in this hole. may actually yeah it works better if you turn after you get it somewhat there so I think it's getting started Ooh. Did it work? Yep. That's good. I think we're good on that one. Yeah. Yeah, best way. Do like I did. Put the spring on first, get that into place, and then rack it or rock it down this way. The spring will actually help seat the piece into it. All right. <clears throat> Got the motor off. Um, what we're going to be doing to this one is we're going to be replacing the two bearings that's in this. And if you recall from previous parts of the video, uh, the wires were pretty much wire nutted on instead of having the quick connector on it. Um, I've already cut off the rough wires. Got my connector here from a spare E300 I had. Um, and also got two terminals. Um, I think I got these from electric scooter parts. Uh, we're going to crimp these on. Uh, I got my controller here that I got just to make sure I'm doing the right, correct uh, matching wire. This is going to be the blue and yellow. I believe that the blue is the positive. So when I put the terminals in, it'll be the vertical uh, terminal. Doesn't really matter because you can always pull the pins out if it, you had it hooked up wrong. Um, <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and strip these. Make sure I get just the amount that I need. And so, if you can see there, that flag or the, yeah, the, those tangs will wrap around the main copper, and then this part will dig into the insulation to give it a better uh, grip. So, what I'm using is a special crimper here. Um, I think I bought these on Amazon. If I did, I'll put a link below. I uh, absolutely love this style crimp better than the, uh, you know, the yellow and blue and red simple, just squeeze the hell out of it style. Um, let's see, 12 through 10, 14. So what I want to do is I'm going to preload this. Is this, yeah, okay. So I'll preload this until it holds it. And that's the best thing about it is it's got a ratcheting action. So right there. Then I can slip my wire through. 
actually. You just make sure your wires are nice and staying together. And I think I need to start crimping. I think this may have been a thicker wire, but uh, anyway, there's what your crimp looks like. I think it, there you go. Alright, so I got my other terminal loaded up. I put it in the other slot for the 12 to 10 um, gauge wire. Because I think this is, I think these wires are 2.5 millimeters. Anyway, we'll see how that cramps. If it doesn't, you can always switch over to the smaller one. Uh, <clears throat> let me see. Yeah, that felt much better. There's another good one right there. And what we'll do. Is we'll just slide and see the, the, the tab, that's the the lock tab. Is that, is that coming up? Yeah, I think so. And then that needs to line up with that. See that little part where it comes up a little bit? So we'll push it through. That click and that little tap pushes up and locks it in place and we'll do the same thing for the red I'm sorry, this way and there we go that's how you fix that connector all right moving on to the bearings um, first thing I would do um, before we take this apart is kind of you know get your pictures of how this thing goes the um, the um, labels here as you can read it and on the right side uh, you have the sprockets remember that and then to keep these plates the end caps lined up I just go ahead and take a paint marker and uh, draw across both sides so that way you can yeah it kind of helps out uh, lining this up first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the sprocket off this is a uh, left hand thread by the way so that means you act like you're tightening a regular bolt this will actually loosen this one off sir we're going to turn it clockwise and um, if you watch right here well yeah you know, it just spins so one way to keep it from moving is you can take your old chain and wrap it around the sprocket and take pliers right here so that way you're not you know it's all the 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 binding of the pliers is on the chain not really on the um, the teeth so you won't mess that up and then, let's see, is that it? Okay, yeah. There's the nut. And then behind that nut is a little spacer ring or washer, it looks like. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it's a it's a lock ring and then you should be able to wiggle this off if not you can always use a little screwdriver there you go and this is a it's got a double I guess what do you call that a double D where it's got a flat spot on both sides all right, so now we're mo moving on to the bearings. Um, you gotta take the two Allen head socket cap screws out, bolt. And when you take these out, there is a lock washer. Looks like underneath, looks that one. I'm not sure the other one's the same way. There you go. 
Let's see, the brushes will be on this side. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna push out the, so if you pull that cap, see there you go, there's a bearing on this side. That's 6201 RS, that's sealed bearing in there. Let's see if you can hear this. It's kind of hard to hear, but they're a little dry. And there you go. Um, now this is a permanent magnet DC motor, so you're going to feel the um, rotor, or, or I'm sorry, the, uh, what do you call it, the armature? It's going to stick in there because of the magnetic uh, force of it. And there you go. So here's this. Put that to the side. So when I pull this out, your brushes are going to fly um, towards the center. But that's all right. So we'll just wiggle this gently out, and there comes your brushes. Um, it looks like the brush assembly it looks like it's kind of staked on there. So there's no real easy way to take this off. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull these brushes out. If you pull them out and swing it to the side, there's a little slot to hold them. Be very careful with these because sometimes these little brushes can be brittle and you don't want them breaking on you. Um, so one of my ideas to get this bearing out because it's a, what they call a blind bearing, it means there's no uh, um, hole on the back side here to punch this out. So. This is where I talked about getting this expander bolt here. And uh, I got some extra nuts that goes with it. Well, it turns out this bearing is super, super easy to get out. <clears throat> Pretty much what we'll do, we'll put our little expansion bolt in there. We'll tighten it. I'm oh, sorry. And then, I gotta do Boom, wiggle it out. Now when you put your new bearing in, there is a uh, wave washer right there in the bottom. Make sure it stays in there. Um, I already went ahead and swapped it out, but this is a good one. This is the new one. So we'll just uh, we'll get that out. I mean, you can pretty much post, push this in by hand. Uh, there's that. Yeah, it's 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 loose in there. I can feel the spring back from the uh, from the wave washer. Um, knocking out the bearing on this one's easy. I mean, it's there's nothing. It's uh, uh, punch, 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 punch right here. I mean, it's already coming out. Um, let me turn this other way. There you go. That's it. Let me get the other one, new one. Put it up here. Make sure you get on there straight. Like I said, you can kind of almost uh, grab an old one here. Done with that one. All right, the part that's going to be fun is putting this stupid thing or getting the uh, commutator to fit within the brushes here. Uh, we gotta get our brushes back. Um, these brushes are eight by one. Let me zero that out. Let's see, eight millimeters by 10 by about 17.6 but that's the wear 
direction. Probably 20 millimeters. Now this is, there's no little pinholes or anything in this one, so it's gonna be rough getting it back in there, but it's, it's, it's doable. Let's see if I can show you. You got a good angle where you can see me what I'm doing. You know what? We'll just do it this way. You can grab the copper, the see the copper, the uh, the brush. You can or the braided. You can kind of help pull it back that way. If I can get there, we go. Don't fall off. Making progress here. Am I there? Okay. Hey, I did it. Now the fun part. Uh Getting this on here, when you when you try to put the uh, outer shell on, it's going to throw this rotor armature, you know, right back to magnetic center on this thing. So what we'll do is we'll do this. We'll push this here, and I'm just going to hold this down as much as I can. Hopefully, I don't pinch my finger here. Hey, there we go. All right. Line this up. There's my mark there. Then, uh, where's my other mark? one way you can do it. <clears throat> We're going to do this with a sock in here. Jet bolts in here from this side. All right, we're done with this one. Well, I'm sorry, we got to put the uh, this back on. thread so you act like you're loosening it all 
All right. Call this part done. <laughs>